Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. As I said in my last video, I need a two-way communication between my robot and my remote control. The setup of this communication with two NRF24L01 modules is the topic of this and the next video. I will concentrate on things not covered in other introduction videos. I will also show you how to avoid mistakes during setup of a unidirectional or bidirectional communication and cover topics like how to find an empty RF channel, how to set up pipes, how to structure data for the transfer, how to set up data rates, how to make the communication stable. At the end, we will have two working modules for our first tests with NRF24L01 chips. And I will show you some ways to increase the range of the devices. So how does the robot setup look like? The robot needs commands for speed and direction. So specific data called control pack are read from a joystick and transmitted by NRF24L01 modules in one direction. And the controller in the robot produces data which is important to the end user and is called display pack. These data are transmitted by the same NRF chips but in the other direction and are displayed on the small OLED display of the remote control. To do that, we have to establish two so-called pipes. Because the software for the robot is quite complicated, I use for this video a simplified setup to explain the communication. After we understand the principles, it is easy to transfer it to the robot sketch. Because the NRF24L01 chip runs on 3.3 volts, I use ProMinis in the 3.3 volt version, connected to the NRF chip. One ProMini has three different potentiometers connected to A0, A1 and A2 pins, and the other is connected to NeoPixels. I want now to influence the color and brightness of these NeoPixels over distance. To get some telemetry data, I also connect a TCS 3200 color sensor to measure the colors of the NeoPixels and send its result back to the first Pro Mini where it is shown in the serial monitor. If I change, for example, the color of the NeoPixels to green, the TCS3200 sends the measured results immediately back to me. So the system seems to work as intended. Now we can dig a little into the details of how it works. As I said before, I will not cover the basic setup of the modules. I enclose some links with useful information in the comment. Only that much. I use the official library provided in the library manager of the Arduino 1.6.5 IDE. I will show you later how you can install it. First we have to understand that each NRF24L01 module consists of a transmitter and a receiver. And they operate on frequencies in the 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz band, which can be used by everybody without a license. Unfortunately, the very same band is also used by many other devices. For example, microwave ovens may use the same band, or your access point, your laptop, your smartphone or your tablet. So it is well possible that this band is quite used in your home. It is like in a field restaurant. Many people want to speak with many other people in the same frequency range. So sometimes it's hard to establish a communication channel 
to the guy on the other side of the table because the noise around you is very high. Fortunately, the NRF24L01 chips can use 128 different frequencies called channels for communication. If modules want to communicate with each other, both devices have to use the same channel. Otherwise, they do not hear each other. So it's like having 128 different rooms in the restaurant. You can imagine that this is easier to communicate in such a situation, but only if you are in the same room. So we first have to find a room without noise, which means in our case, a channel without noise. Normally, you need an expensive spectrum analyzer to do that. Fortunately, there is a much simpler and cheaper way. We use the receiver of our NRF24L01 to do this job. If you go to your Arduino IDE, to the sketch and include library and manage libraries, you can search for RF24 and you get the library by TMRH20. Please install the latest version. Then you can get the scanner sketch from the examples. Please adjust the CE and CS pins according your setup and upload it to one of your devices. Immediately it starts to scan all 128 channels and displays the noise level of each channel from 1 to 10 in the serial monitor. I transferred the results to Excel and draw two charts. On the first chart we see about 10 scans and on the second I averaged them out. We see that the channels from 0, 05 to 2A are more or less occupied. Only channel 14 to 16 are free and could be used in this area. Just to show you where the traffic is coming from in my home, I switched off my access point. You see now channels 17 to 2A are much less crowded. By the way, channels are numbered in hexadecimal. Before you decide on a channel, I suggest that you let the scanner run for a few hours to be really sure about the situation in your environment. If the distance between the two devices will be large, it is necessary to do this in both locations. Then you can decide the one channel to be used by both of your devices. It has to be free in both locations. I choose channel 34 hex, which is far away from the noise. Now we are able to create a proper 2.4 GHz connection between the two devices. And we can go on to the software part. NRF24L01 chips communicate through pipes. The pipes are basically addresses like the addresses in the Internet. The receiver only decodes data packets with the pipe address you set in your code. All other packets on the same channel are ignored. So it is possible to operate many different NRF24L01 devices on one channel. Of course, at one point in time, only one sender can connect to one receiver. If two senders send together, then the receivers only hear noise. Exactly as in the restaurant when two people talk to you in the same moment. As a last thing we have to consider. NRF24L01s can use different transmission speeds. Communication only can be established if the two chips use the same transmission speed. In our case, we use the faster speed 2 megabit per second. You can also use 1 megabit or 250 kilobits per second if you think your communication link gets more stable because of that. So, summarized, we need to find a free channel, 
set all devices which have to communicate to each other on this channel and decide on the communication speed and on the pipe address for each communication path. Only if all these prerequisites are fulfilled, a communication will take place. But still one problem remains. If the channel is blocked either by another NRF24 LO1 chip or by another device, the receiver does not get the information and the data packet is lost. This problem and other topics will be covered in the next video. If you subscribe, you will not miss it. I hope this episode was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.